I was the first one to be picked up, so they put me in a cell. They locked me in there in this degrading little outfit. so loud in my life. Never been so upset in my life. It was an experience of being out of control. Stanford University, Northern California. One of America's most prestigious academic institutions. And in 1971, the scene of one of the most notorious experiments in the history of psychology. I was interested in what happens if you put good people in an evil place. Does the situation outside of you, the institution, c come to control your behavior? Or does the things inside of you, your attitude, your values, your morality, uh, allow you to, to rise above uh, a negative environment? The negative environment Zimbardo chose to test his ideas was a prison he would convert the basement of the university's psychology department into a subterranean jail. We would put uh, prison doors on each of three office cells. In the cells, there was nothing but three beds, uh, and, and there was very, actually very little room for anything else because they were very small. And here we had solitary confinement, which we call the hole. Uh, and in the hole was, was the place where prisoners would be put for punishment. It was a very, very small area. When you closed the door, it was totally dark. All the guards wore military uniforms, and we had them wear these silver reflecting sunglasses. And what it does is you can't see someone's eyes, and so that loses some of the, the humanness, the humanity. In general, we wanted to create a sense of power. That is, the guards as a category are people who have power over others, in this case, power over the prisoners. A decade earlier, psychologist Stanley Milgram had also looked at how we respond to authority. In order to understand how people were induced to obey unjust regimes and participate in atrocities such as the Holocaust, he set up an experiment. Volunteers were told they were taking part in scientific research to improve memory. Could you open those and tell me which of you is which, please? Teacher. Teacher. Like Milgram, Zimbardo was interested in the power of social situations to overwhelm individuals. His experiment would test people's responses to an oppressive regime. Would they accept it or act against it? Zimbardo's experiment was conducted against a backdrop of civil rights activism and protest against the Vietnam War. There was a sense of student power, student dominance, and student rebellion against, against authority in general. It was from the student body that Zimbardo selected his participants. After passing tests to screen out anyone with a psychological abnormality, they were paid $15 a day. Each was randomly assigned to the role of guard or prisoner. It was a prison to me. It still is a prison to me. I don't look on it as an experiment or a simulation. It was just a, a prison that was run by psychologists instead of run by the state. I was 20, and that September I was going to college and it would be nice to have a summer job, but there sure wasn't a lot of time left. And I looked in the want ads, and I found this thing which was just going to fit. It was just two weeks. Once you put a uniform on and are given a job to keep these people in line, you really become that person. Once you put on that khaki uniform, you put on the glasses, you, put on, you take the nightstick. I was on summer break from my first year in college and uh, I was looking for a job. Had to choose between that and making pizzas. And that sounded like a lot more fun. As well as running the experiment, Zimbardo took on the role of prison superintendent. He began by briefing the guards. I said, you have to maintain law and order. If prisoners escape, the study is over and you can't use physical violence. Can create a sense of fear in them, can create the notion that their life is totally controlled. 
by us, that there'll be constant surveillance. We have total power in the situation, and they have none. Prisoners were brought to the basement prison, blindfolded, to confuse them about their whereabouts. They were stripped and deloused. Of course, the guards started making fun of their genitals and humiliating them. And really, it's the start of what's known as the degradation process, which not only prisons, but lots of military-type outfits use that process. <laughs> When I first got here, even though like I had to strip when they would call me names, I still didn't feel at all like I was in the prison. I was just looking at it as a job. I recall sort of walking up and down the uh, very short hallway, which was the prison hall, and looking in on the prisoners, and they're basically lounging around on their beds. I felt it was like a day in summer camp. The first day I said, this might be a very long, very boring experiment. Uh, because it's conceivable nothing will happen. I arrived independently at the conclusion that this experiment must have been put together to prove a point about prisons being a cruel and inhumane place, and therefore I would do my part you know, to, to help those results come about. I was a confrontational and arrogant 18-year-old uh, at the time, and uh, you know, I said, somebody ought to stir things up a bit here. On the second morning, the prisoners had decided to stir things up as well. The guards found some of them had used their beds to barricade their cell. Prisoner 8612 was one of the ringleaders of the rebellion. Initially, I was stunned. I didn't expect a rebellion because not much happened. I mean, it wasn't clear what they were what they were rebelling against, but they were rebelling against the status, rebelling against being anonymous, against um, having to follow orders from, from these, these other students. As punishment for the rebellion, prisoner 8612 was put in the hole, and the guards turned on the other prisoners. The guards felt that they now have to up the ante of being tough. The prisoners made the mistake of beginning to use profanity against the guards in a very personalized way. So not against the guards, but, you know, you little punk, you, you big shit, and so forth. And the guards got furious. Everybody out! All right, come on! Up, up. Well, gentlemen, here it is, time for count. Prisoners were repeatedly woken in the middle of the night. The guards made them do menial, physical tasks and clean out toilets with their bare hands. We made it a, a point to not give them any sense of, of comfort or what to expect, that, you know, that anything could happen to them at any time, including being rousted from their sleep at any hour and forced to stand up in a line and have me hurl insults at them and uh, make them do exercises 